So what made that price action going higher energetic like that? The fact that it was opposing the expected result. The expected result would be stocks should go lower and it's sell in May and go away. Now, and that's not to say that we can't sell off right here or tomorrow. And that begins the whole typical May seasonality. It's just it wasn't in the cards technically to go lower. And I'm not trying to pick the top, but I'm satisfied with where the NASDAQ is. So when I say things like that, immediately the infants in learning how to do this will come up and say, and I say that not to be mean, but you're an infant when you want to go, okay, well, now what? Look at the guys and the gals in the comment section or replies to my tweet and such. And I see it all the time in my comment section. The same five or six people. Okay, now what? Now what's going to happen? Now what's going to happen? Like, dude, what the fuck? It just moved over a thousand points. Over a thousand fucking points that not one YouTuber talked about. Not one of them. And I guarantee you, secretly, some of them have been fading me, hoping they can come back and say, he said it was going to do this. And guess what? You got your ass hurt, didn't it? Your ass is stretched out now. Ain't I'm trying to help all of you. But I'm teaching you practically based on what we're seeing in the chart real time. Where is it going to go next? I could do that all day long in one minute charts. All day long. All day long. Every, every major fluctuation intraday, I can be a part of that up and down. I get losses from that. I will incur losing trades by doing that. But I can play that all day long. Making $19,000, $20,000 over the whole week using multiple contract or, or accounts of demo. You know, I can do that $19,000 in fucking one session. I don't need your bullshit. <laughs> okay. So when you look at these other folks out there, they're going to try to distract you from learning this because this is going to help you and it's going to minimize what they're doing. Their strengths are going to be reduced by your ability to do this without any indicator, no crutch, not one fucking thing needs to be applied to your chart except for your own notes and annotations. And that flies in the face of the majority of everybody on YouTube. More people is going to join the hate wagon, okay? They're going to because they think that's going to be a way for them to overcome this monster, this Frankenstein ice tea is. I'm just an average dude, man. That's it. I'm trying to help all of you. I'm not victimizing any of you. I'm not coming after your YouTube channel and trying to talk shit about anybody. And when you do that kind of stuff, it makes you the wrong kind of influence. Like our community here, everybody that sells a service, they'll say our community sucks. Well, they say that because they call bullshit when they see it from their YouTube channel. And they say that price is being bought up and buying pressure sends price higher when you know differently now but they don't like that because it goes against their narrative their their selling points are those things those features that appear in books so it goes without saying of course they're going to say our community's toxic because we're calling them bullshit they're not doing the right things with the markets even if they're making money they're attributing their happenstance being right and i've had lots of that in the beginning and these folks are 20 years old they're fresh out of high school most of them and they're teaching. What the fuck are you teaching? What not to do? That's what they're teaching. Don't do those things. I'm, I'm still here. I'm just looking. It's, it's, what the hell is that? That's got to be a drone. <laughs> Hang on. I'm not sure if I can do this while I'm talking to you on the chat. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a drone. Somebody's flying a drone. The, um, I was like, oh, shit, I got me a UFO. <laughs> Tinfoil hat, what came out of nowhere. That shit can happen anytime. But anyway, the, uh, this, this journey of yours, okay, this journey that you're going through, you're going to have peaks of mountains that you're going you're gonna to reach the top of and you're going to feel like you've conquered everything. And then you're going to keep going forward. Well, if you're at the top of the mountain, what's going to happen? You're going to have to go down. Keep going forward. Well, that means you're going down. But you're going to view that going down period as the end of your career. And you start pushing too hard on your trades and forcing things. 
forcing, forcing things that aren't in the chart. So what I did was I used the information that I gleaned from pain, blown accounts, real psychological warfare that I put myself through. No troll can say anything to me that would be more painful than I've already done to myself in my career as a 20-year-old. Nobody could do anything to me. Nobody can do anything, say anything about me that make me fucking lose sleep. I don't give a shit, okay? But you as a new student, whether you're learning from me or anybody else, you're highly influenced. It's so easy to manipulate and, and, and you're malleable. Look, you're, you can be manipulated to the point where bad news about anything that you're trying to do will convince you quickly. And you'll use that as a perfect excuse to say, okay, it's too much effort. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a fraud. It's definitely a scam. It's, 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 this this stuff doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't work when it does. You just simply haven't put the time in doing the right things. Okay, there's people out there that spent a lot of time doing stupid shit, watching videos only. You got to be in this, looking at the price action, studying it, going through the process of measuring how much drawdown the trades occur. How often does these fair value gaps form? I've literally removed all of the fucking guesswork and reduced it down to a 60 minute time window. Okay. 60 minute time window, gave it a cool ass name, the silver bullet, because that's what you're looking for, a fucking silver bullet that never misses. Okay. If you understand narrative and you know where the next draw on liquidity is, you have a 90% likelihood of making fucking money if you know how to trade and use that model. There's nobody else out there can say that shit because their indicators, they don't know when their indicators are going to change and say it's overbought, oversold, or it's a diversion. They don't know. They're a victim of that shit. They're waiting for that train wreck to happen. They're waiting for it. I am telling you where this shit's going to explode. I'm telling you where it's going to go to. I'm telling you what time it's going to form. What guessing game do you need to make now? What guessing game? Between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock, every fucking day, there is a gap that can be found from a five minute. If it's not on a five minute, where do you look? Okay, drop down to a four minute. I don't see a gap there yet. Let me drop down to what? Three minutes. You learned that in a 2022 model. Some of you are pretending like you never even watched that stuff. You didn't You didn't figure that out yet? You have to go down. You, you're doing a top-down analysis on intraday chart, on micro-market analysis. Five minutes. That's your high time frame on intraday. When you're in the little time frames, you know, five minutes is like a fucking weekly chart on a 15-second chart. But I don't want to trade that way. Then don't fucking trade that way. But use the information on the higher time frames. You guys bellyache. The, bell, the, the, the people that do bellyache, you're bellyaching about things that I've already addressed. If you just simply watched the videos and kept good notes, I've already talked about those things. But you're fucking lazy. You, don't, you want me to take you to the video at the minute marker and save you all the time and effort of going through it properly. And you learn more going through it the normal way. You think that one thing you're wrestling right now is going to be the thing that makes it better for you to start making money. That's not how it works. Because when you learn something new, 20 more fucking questions pop up. You know what, that, you know what that's called? That's fucking progress. Okay? That's progress. And you're afraid of it because you're stepping into the unknown. You're stepping into a field that is extremely technical. And all the results are contributed to your decision making. Your execution you're pushing on the button you're not or placing of a stop loss the amount of leverage that you're applying to that trade that's all your fucking fault it's yours you need to own it i'd never sugarcoat that stuff and the people that bellyache the most are the ones that are doing all the wrong things and they're thinking that there's something new i'm going to teach that fixes that when it's you you are it was me when i was younger i did all that same stupid shit I was the reason why I was blown as accounts. It wasn't the market. It was me. I knew what I was doing most of the time was wrong right before it would stop me out. And I still wouldn't get out because I was arm wrestling it. Well, I had a perfect opportunity, a perfect stage set for me right now, just recently in the last six weeks or so. I introduced what I like. I would like to see the seasonal tendency pan out. I would like, to, I said that. I said it in Twitter spaces. I said it in a YouTube video. I audibly made myself and talked about it in tweets. But if the market in itself is showing us it's not going to do that, 
I'm not that same 20 year old neophyte. I'm not the guy that's wrestling with his emotions about being right. I don't need to be fucking right. It's actually better. It's better when I'm not right. I can teach you when I'm messing it up. I'm a human being. If I make a mistake, how are you going to deal with that? How does ICT deal with it when he does it wrong? Look at what I did on Friday. Like 11,000 something, whatever it is, in terms of trading up and down, up and down. And I forced myself to take shorts that I know that could potentially pay out. But the bias was what? Reaching that weekly volume imbalance. I even type it out. This is not a short. You're all going to see it. So I'm communicating that, yes, there's a short there, but it's not the short that I would really want. I want to be long. And I showed you the history, every little trade, every little thing that went through. And I think it was like nine hundred and seventy five dollar uh, losing trade there. But on the grand scheme of things, it's nothing on that day. You wouldn't even feel that if every one of those trades were made by you. you, you would you be worried about that nine hundred seventy five dollars that it would have been a loss? For some of you, it's like the end of the fucking world. It's the rock in your shoe. You can't go any further. You can't, I can't do this anymore. It's, it hurts too much. You're not ready. So how, how do you fix that? Go back into back testing. For the guy that sent me a tweet this morning. He said, uh, what do I do if I'm able to see the draw on liquidity? Well, first of all, you got to understand, are you able to do that or are you using mine? Because if I'm calling the market direction... And you're falsely attributing it that you can do that because many times students come to me in the early stages. They think I'm ready because I'm lending you my experience. I'm giving you my 30 years of experience reading these markets. That way you can decide on where you think the market's going to go. You, you can ignore me. You can fade me at your peril. But I'm telling you where I believe the market's going to go next. And look at it. We've been doing it for a couple of years now publicly. And you decide, is it, is it accurate? Is it accurate or not? If it is, that's what keeps you here. That's what keeps the, the community growing. Because if I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, I would be canceled already. Be like, this, this guy's going to the fuck he's talking about. You see it. You see the evidence of it. But are you really able to see the next draw on liquidity? If you are, what model are you using? What's the multiplier you're using? What PD array are you using to get into a trade? Is it always changing? As a mentor, I discovered that many of my students wanted to force a specific PD array. And it's usually in the beginning, it's the order block. The least taught thing that I've done, that's the thing that they want. Because everybody doesn't know what the fuck they're doing with it. And I've already said this. That will not be released until it's in a book. Because it's been already been abused poorly you know, from other people. You don't know what an order block is. Okay. It has nothing to do with level two data. It has nothing to do with the size of orders resting in the market. It has nothing to do with that. It's a change in the state of delivery where the market turns from a buy model to a sell model, from a sell model to a buy model. I have not taught that to anybody. My charter members don't know that. They did not learn that, okay? They have been introduced to an idea. They, If they were all in a room right now, and I said, okay, raise your hand as a private mentorship student. You're all charter members. Raise your hand if I taught that. Nobody would raise their hand up. Raise your hand if I said you've just been introduced to it. There's more lectures coming on that. They would all raise their hand. So stop believing these fucking people trying to sell you shit. I got the secrets from ICT's forum. He taught this. He taught Enigma. I am never teaching fucking Enigma. Enigma. It's not going to be taught to anybody outside my fucking family. My children are going to decide whether or not it ever gets taught. Maybe one of them will sell out their soul <laughs> and make it a book or make it a course or whatever. I don't give a fuck. You know, it's their, it's their decision. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm on a really long rabbit trail. I gotta check my notes here, make sure I'm on the right path. <laughs> so uh yeah, we talked about that and talked about the model. And um the the content that I've already released. Um I hope you guys can appreciate me just talking to you like you know, we've known each other for a long time. Because this is how I would talk to you if you were right next to me. If you were doing one on one with me, this is how I would talk to you. I wouldn't sugarcoat anything. I would be honest. I would tell you where I made mistakes. I would tell you what I learned from those mistakes. And I wouldn't hide from it because that's, that's where the real learning occurs. 
But so many of you are perpetual ICT students and you don't realize it. And I understand that you like what I do and you like how I do it and it's great concepts, but don't lose sight of why you are learning. You're all waiting for the next thing to be taught. Just like the folks that always say, when it delivers to where I think it's going to go, and the market goes to whatever level I've outlined publicly, and it does that, they're the first four or five people that show up in my comment section or reply to a tweet and say, okay, what's next? Now, here's one, of the, it's either one or the other. It's somebody that's waiting for me to get it wrong, and they're going to ch you know, champion that all over the internet. He said it was going to do this, and it did that, okay? Or they're just somebody that wants to always be in the marketplace. And there is a period of time between trades that you have to get real comfortable with. That period between not engaging, when the market delivers something that you've anticipated, like we, we just watch it unfold in the indices. We watch it unfold in Euro dollar. Dollar index, okay? So I did things in Forex for the crowd that loves Forex and know me mostly for, from that. And I've stayed true to E-mini S&P. I said I was going to focus on E-mini S&P. But before we even started this whole parade, I told you NASDAQ was the, the one. And if you're trading NASDAQ, keep your focus up on that weekly gap inside that volume of balance. And we gapped up into it today. Beautifully. I'm satisfied. Now, what does that mean? So that way you understand, you put in your notes. That means I am literally neutral. I hold no bias right now. What do you mean you don't hold bias? Come on, ICT, you're holding back. No. I enjoy the period of time when I've expected the market to perform a specific way. I submitted myself to that whole time. I didn't arm wrestle it. I bask in it. I peacock around in front of my wife about all the time. <laughs> you think I'm being funny? I am. I'm fucking really doing it because I want her to see what I do that she thinks is a video game. Like this is a hard, this is hard. It isn't a fucking video game. This is something that takes a lot of skill, a lot of attention, a lot of effort, focus, and you're wrestling with yourself. And on social media, I have all kinds of assholes constantly coming over here trying to promote some idea that would be opposing to whatever I'm saying, hoping that they're right. And most of them are falling on their face. And I just let them talk. I, I'll mute them. But you don't ever hear from them again. They stop talking their shit. And I go check and see what they're doing. They block me. <laughs> but I do this to, to rub my wife. I'm like, hey, look, you know, I, you know, I said this is what's going to happen and this is what it is. And she's like, unimpressed because she thinks it's fucking playstation like it's it's some kind of xbox fucking game <laughs> so when you learn how to do this and you get your victories learn to bask in them that's not ego you're gonna need those moments to lean on when you go into periods of drawdown you gotta be able to remind yourself man it felt really good to get this right to do everything in the analysis as I was taught, and it performed exactly as I was expecting. This feels good. You need to set up a tent and live there for a little while. Not just say, okay, next trade. That's where you get your ass handed to you. Every, listen, folks, listen real, real fucking close. Because this is the truth. Every single time. Every single time I blew an account came immediately on the heels of something like we just experienced, where I did something right, it performed the way I was expecting, it went to target, and that that sugar high wore off, and they wear off fucking quick. You think you're just like, oh, you call a thousand point move, does this, does that, does this, you know, all these wonderful feelings. You get the butterflies, you share it with your friends, you show your coworker, you show your boss, this is what I made, so that way he knows that your fucking pittance of a money paycheck you give me is nothing to me. It's literally fucking less than one handle on the S&P for me. Go fuck yourself. That wears off fast. That wears off real, real fast. So what do you want to do? You want to get another hit. You want to get another drag on that joint we call the market. Smoking's bad for you. Don't do that. 
Smoke the markets. It's healthier. So don't rush. Don't rush to get back in there and do something right away because what you're feeling is withdrawal. You're all hopped up on fucking goofballs. You did something right, which is great. Champion that. But live there for a little while. Take a week off. You just did something amazing. What most people fail at. You adhere to one rule, which is stick to the model. Don't get caught up with the media. The media was saying, oh, the market's going to crash. Mm -mm. I would like to see it happen. I would like to see us default. It would be painful as shit. It would be a wreck, carnage, every fucking where. But that's exactly what should take place. In a real free market, that's what should be happening. And it's not. So you got to keep taking your buy signals. If the market's saying, I'm not going down, and the best pain threshold will be met by going higher. Now, here's narrative. This is where we transition from just market macro perspective talking in generalized commentary to now specifics. Where we have a seasonal tendency that even the general populace knows that, you know, if you're a trader in stocks, usually it's the sell in main go away. I would like to see that form. But what is the chart telling me? There's a weekly volume imbalance. Everything I've taken you to into the charts, because the charts tell the story. Fuck the media. Fuck all the reports. I don't even know what those data points say. Like when CPI comes out, I couldn't tell you to save my own ass what any of that information was or what the, what the data was. I could never tell you. I don't care. I don't care to know because it's all bullshit. It's all fake. It's all manipulation. They use that as a way, of like a, a magician. Okay, if I was standing in front of you, I'm pretty good. Uh, sleight of hand. I could take something, place it in this hand, and you'd swear up and down that I placed it here, and it would be in my other hand. And while you're looking at that hand, I'm dropping it in my pocket or switching it with something else. And then the reveal would be like, "How the hell did you just do that?" 